I'm so in love. So come in like a fire. Come in like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. So come in like a fire. Come on in. Come in like a flood. I don't care what I look like. I'm so in love. So come on in. So come in like a fire. Come in like a flood. like a fire, come in like a flood, I don't care what I look like, <laughs> cause I'm so in love. Come on in, come on in like a fire, come in like a flood. I don't care what I look like. <laughs> Come on, say that again. Come in like Come in like a flood. I don't care what I look like. I'm so in love. so in love. Welcome to Dove Church today. And we're inviting the Lord to come in like fire and to come in like a flood. We don't care what it looks like because we're so in love. We thank you for tuning in today. and We bless you. We're in the midst of just celebrating the Lord today and his goodness towards us. So we pray for you, believe for you, thank God for you. Thank you for your support of this ministry. In Jesus' name. We're fastly going to move into the word. Get your Bible on you wherever your Bible is, on whatever device. And repeat after me these words. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught. The infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all this day has called us to. We worship and honor you and declare there is none like you. And we thank you, God, that we're in love with you today. Thank you for loving us back. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Today we want to talk from, from the sermon heading, You Have Hell. You Have Hell. You Have Hell. And immediately I want you to turn your attention to this entire psalm. And it's Psalm 121, 1 through 8. Psalm 121, 1 through 8. Say it after me. You have help. Now let's make it personal. I have help. The Lord placed this on my heart, and it, it's, it's a simple message, but it's, I believe, a good one and a foundational one to let you know that you're not alone in your fight. You're not alone in your life journey. You have help. It's good to know you got help. It's good to know you got help. Here is the reading. Here is the reading. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And I want to let somebody know on the heels of that last verse. It hit me while I was reading it. I don't, what, I don't know what happened to you or what's going on that came before I said this. But from this time forth and even forever, you got help. Take comfort in the fact that you are not in the fight alone. Come on, come on. I think somebody needs to hear this. Because sometimes the fight can get intense, so intense that it gets intimate. It's your own personal struggle. And it is, but we act as if that, that, that if he can't join us in the army fight, why can't he join us in our personal fight? And he can join us in our personal intimate fight that, that, that seems like nobody else is going through. But it's funny how the enemy can mess with a bunch of folk at the same time. But conversely, God can bless and work with a bunch of folk at the same time. You got help. You got help. In Psalm 21, this psalm which is, which, is, which is the Hebrew way of saying song, is a song of ascent. Ascent means to go up. To go up. This song was sung by the Levites. 
and the pilgrims as they walked up to Jerusalem, going up to, to the mountain of the Lord, which was called Mount Zion which was where the temple is, which is called Temple Mount. It, it's, and it was in the highest point in Jerusalem. So even before they got there, they had to look up to see which way they were going. And it was sitting among hills. But along with it sitting among hills, they had to come through the Judean hills to get up to the hill of the Lord, which is what they call Mount Zion, the hill of the Lord. And each time you, 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 you go to festival days and feast days and, and high holy day, you had to go up to the mountain of the Lord. And, and in it, the songwriter in making that travel says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. No, he's not talking about the hill. He's talking about the direction past the hill. There's nothing at the hill. But when you look past the hill, to the place of the presence of the Lord. I'm looking to the Lord from where my help is coming from. And that's up. Whenever you seek in the Lord, you want him to snatch you up. Snatch you out of something. Let's unpack the verse some more. The writer of this psalm is, anon is anonymous. And, and the song is antiphonal. That means two or three groups are singing it. It's like the responsive readings we used to do in church where the minister would read one line and the congregation would read the other line. Responsive readings. So, so when you sing it, it's called antiphonal. The Lord is my light. Then somebody will sing, and my salvation. Then another group might come in with another part of the song. But they were all singing it. And, and, it, and, and it's amazing that the different groups that were on their way to feast day and high holy day, they were singing the same song, but the different groups were marching at different paces, going up to the temple of the Lord, going up to the hill of the Lord, until they all were singing it, and another group in the back would say would repeat it, and another group would pick it up and finish the song, and all of them were singing the same song as they went up to the presence of the Lord. In this psalm, the first two verses are anticipation of divine help. The next verses 3 through 8 are the assurance of divine help. So you get in this poem. This is a song poem. The anticipation of help. And then you get the assurance of divine help. Now, when the verse opens up, it said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills and then the response comes back, and it's not like a response is not needed. It says that from whence my help, or where does my help come from? It's not like they don't know, and somebody else sung this next part. My help comes from the Lord. It's as if Pastor Marcy said, where does my help come from? And Lou doubled back and said, it comes from the Lord. Let's talk about climbing. Climbing is not easy. It is so wonderful to say, let's go up to the house of the Lord. It's, it's poetic. It's beautiful. Let's go up to the house of the Lord. 
But getting there is another thing. I didn't understood it until we took a trip to Jerusalem and we were walking up the hills. I always bless the walk down. Because the walk up is harder than to walk down. I, I, I got a few instances just in case you, you haven't been to Israel. You don't know what I'm talking about. Those times when you went to the gym. <laughs> and you got on, you dared get on the treadmill. How many of you still remember what the treadmill is? Come on, put your hand up if you know what the treadmill is. It's that thing that has that running little track on it. and You step on it at, at a speed you can handle at first. And the treadmill is okay as long as you are walking flat. But don't dare hit one of them buttons and you hear the machine go, mm. and it leans you back, and suddenly what was flat has become an incline. And it's harder to do the incline long if you're out of shape. How many of you know about, how many know you can walk on the flat treadmill for a while? But if they put that incline, if you, you put that incline on it, you catch what is known as resistance. So climbing includes resistance. But resistance is good for you. Tell somebody next to you, resistance is good for you. You know why it's good? Because it's not easy, and it forces you to go beyond the norm. And it strengthens you. Because if you can get used to the incline, after a while where you could only do a minute or two, after a while you can do five minutes, then you get crazy and you can do half an hour on the incline. And then, then, then stage three comes in and, and bumps you up and. And it's harder to do. Going up and climbing is hard. Oh, you don't understand that one. Anybody ever been on a bike? And it was all right until you met the hill. Going up the hill was hard. In my neighborhood, what looks like winter set circle is flat. It's not. It's only flat at my driveway. Are, are y'all with me? It's only flat at my driveway. And I'm flying along. And then to my left as I start, I say, this, this place ain't flat. Th this is a hill. The reason why I recognize that I was going up on a hill is because it got harder. And where I was just flying along, after a while, I started going, <gasps> struggling. So climbing causes resistance. Now, what would help me is if I would do it every day. Then the hill would be manageable. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But we only sometimes motivate it to, to exercise. And once you decide to do it, it reminds you why you don't want to do it. <laughs> because you don't do it regularly. Because once you do it regularly, it gets easy. Okay, y'all not going to work with me. Yet. And that's true of anything. If you fall out of the habit of it, it's hard to do. 
If you fall out of worshiping God, it's hard to get in the habit of doing it. If you fall out of praising God, it's hard to get in there. That's why I don't care what they say about COVID and Corona and all of that. The Bible said it's good for us to come together. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Because underlying, God knows it's the thing that keeps you strong. It gives you the ability to get to hell. Somebody said, oh, pastor, don't, don't get on me. Don't, don't, no, 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 no. We have to remind you what scripture says. I'm just a paper boy. I believe the Lord not only wants takes us from faith to faith. He not only takes us from grace to grace, he takes us from strength to strength. Because when you declare, I cannot go through anything else, something else comes and you go through. Am I talking right? And then you say, at the next place, you said that here. Then he delivers you to someplace else, and you said, I can't go through nothing else. Well, just take a look over your left shoulder to where you've been already. And you said that testimony that you made that proclamation, I can't go through nothing else back there. And you went through something else and you're standing on the other side of it right here. In anybody am I talking to, you, you, you said, I, I don't want another nothing. And then something else come up and God delivers you out of that. Maybe God is trying to tell you, shut up. Because you got help. I brought you out the last situation and you didn't die. You felt like you were dying, but you didn't die. I brought you through it. You got help. You didn't do it on your own. And some of us would dare sit down and say, well, I figured that out. I figured that out. It worked out. I, I figured. You didn't figure nothing out. You were so wore out, you went to bed. You got tired, and you went to sleep. And while you were asleep, the Lord got a chance to work with you and work with your thinking and work with your spirit until you could come out on a better play. He, he had to lay you down so he could work with your silly self. Because he had to lay me down sometime so he can, can work with me. Maybe if I can just get you to sleep, to shut up your mouth, maybe I can get it to work in your life. And while, while, while you're laying down, maybe I can talk to you and say, when you get up, try this. Or maybe he just wants you to, to get your faith muscle into good condition. That Because you ain't believing when you lay down. But when you get up, it changes. He just help you believe better. Because you feel better. You're not tired anymore. Because sometimes you can get so tired. Till you say, do I have any help? You're frustrated with everything and everybody. Maybe that's just me. Don't nobody else ask me nothing. No, I don't have it. No. Everybody say it with me. Let's just practice saying it. No. Don't bring your laundry. No. Are y'all with me today? Do you understand what I'm saying? But, but I came to tell you in this song, uh, in, in this song of ascent, as you go up and face resistance, but you keep moving in the Lord, you've got help. <laughs> You're not without help because... You're moving into his presence over and over and over and over again. You got help. 
Yes, the climb is rough. My baby's having a ball today. See, he said, if these hold their peace. See, 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 the, the baby's saying yes. Or they saying no, or they saying da da or something, but they saying something. And the Bible say, let the redeemed say so. See, at some point you got to stop sitting and acting like I'm all alone in this. And so when you get all alone, you get all mad. And the first thing you say and make this testimony is nobody helped me do nothing. I ain't helping nobody because don't nobody help me do nothing. Oh, God. I'm not even going to ask you to show hands if you said that before. Maybe the Lord don't want anybody else to help you. My help. My help, my help comes. Really, the psalmist is saying here, I want you to look past the mountains into the heavens, into the place where God is. I want you to look to God, and that's where your help is coming from. But, 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 the, but, but the psalmist is also saying, I want you to get your, your focus in the right direction. Because it can't stay here, it's got to go there. See, you keep looking to people that what only God can do. See, see, see they will always fail you. Because they really don't have the answer. You have to look to God for your answer. Deuteronomy 33 and 26. I ran across this scripture. It was fabulous for me. And it said, there is no one like the God of Jezreel. Mentions a person who loved God. And it says how great God is. Who rides the heavens to help you. My God. And in his excellency on the cloud. He rides the heavens and the clouds to help you. So when you, you pray sometime, you can say, oh, great cloud rider, I need you. Oh, great heaven rider, I need you. I heard an old preacher pray this one time, you who ride the clouds to help he rides them to help you how swift are clouds how quickly can they operate where are they they're everywhere sometimes and they're no place else but most of the time they, what are they just things hanging in there with water inside with, he, but, but they say Clouds is, is sturdy enough to allow God to ride on them to deliver help to you. You got help today. Then another voice comes in in verse 3 of this passage. Perhaps a choir sings these words back to the speaker. The Lord will not permit those who look to him to stumble. He will not allow you to stumble because as you're looking to him, you're not watching your feet. Maybe you are stumbling because you keep watching your own feet. That's why you keep stumbling when you need to be looking to him so your feet don't have anything to worry about. God, I'm just following you. And if you follow him, you won't stumble. But if you're doing this the whole while you're walking, you're going to stumble. Are you out there? 
Then Psalms 34 and 15 says this, just in case you don't know. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. You have help. Psalm 34 and 15. Then in comes verse 4. And I'm just doing this passage by passage. Then a third voice chimes in and underscores the thought that Israel guardian never slumbers or sleeps. Your guardian never slumbers or sleeps. First is personal, then it's congregational. He never slumbers and he never sleeps. What, what, and, 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 and just for interest's sake, I look up what, what, what it meant to be to slumber. The slumber is light sleep. It's the cat nap. <laughs> it's not long. It's not for hours. Unless some of y'all take a cat nap in the afternoon for hours, then you go to bed. It's a slight nap. You're not really all the way deep sleep. That's what sleep is. But it's a slight sleep. And, and, and when I looked it up, I said, God, what does slumber mean? Scripture is pointed to slumber as a state of negligence. It, it is inattention. It's inactivity. So to say God slumbers says that he is inattentive, negligent, and inactive. That's why the Bible say he don't even go into light sleep or deep sleep over you. He neither slumbers, come on, say it out loud, God is not negligent. And then another psalmist wrote this about understanding that God was not negligent in Psalm 139 and 3. And this is in the NIV. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways because he doesn't sleep. He knows what you're doing. He knows where you're at. He knows what's on your heart. He knows what's troubling with you so he can't sleep because if God were to sleep, you would be lost. You ought to tap somebody. I thank God Come on, tell him that he didn't take a cat nap on me. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. You can be negligent. You can do it when you want to. You can do it when you feel like it. But God doesn't take that advantage with you. He doesn't even pretend like he wants to go to sleep. He stands guard all the time. And he's always speaking. I think every crisis that happens in the world can be averted because God spoke before the crisis came. Ooh. Before 9-11 happened to those towers, God spoke to some people. Oh, oh no, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Because later on, the witness came back. Some of the people that didn't enter the tower, that worked in them towers on that day, said this to news people. I was going to work, and I had a feeling I shouldn't go in. That's the best way they could describe it. But it was the Lord. Somebody said, oh, Pastor Adam, he speaks. <laughs> the eyes of the Lord are in the earth. And he's watching over the righteous. 
He's trying to help avert something. Many of you got, got feelings about stuff before you even engaged in it. And the Lord said, don't do it. How many of you went through that and, 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 and after a while you realized, oh, that was good. Because you didn't get the information until much later or it might have been the next day or the next hour of what would have been the outcome had you, you went in your flesh. Your emotions are not good indicators that it's God. Your I love you's may not be God. Uh oh, they didn't like that. But we want to hang it all on those places. When, when God speaks, it's almost unemotional. It comes out of nowhere. It ain't attached to nothing. It just, I shouldn't do that. He watches over the righteous to help. You got help. Again, Psalm 139 and 3 says, You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. You might be able to tell me you don't know me, but you can't tell God you don't know me. He's familiar with your way. He know what your favorite dessert is. He said, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. But he'll keep not only Israel, he'll keep you individually. And how would he keep you? Everywhere you go, going out and coming in. When you go to buy simple things, he'll, he'll be there with you. He'll, he'll direct you. He'll, he, he'll even help you with your charge card. He'll help you with it. Don't spend nothing today. Don't buy it. Leave it alone. You got help. You got help. The question is, do you want to accept the help? So, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. You got help today. In every situation, everything that happens to you, you got help because God is concerned about you. You're in school, he's concerned about that. You need a bill pay, it, it, it didn't get past God. You don't have money to meet the need, it didn't get past God. He made a way to, to get those things done in your life. You just got to rely on him and go to him. I look to the hill. I look to God from where my help comes from. Look to God today. Look to him for all that you need, all that you've got to have in your life. Don't look to a person. We like them a lot, but I, I love her a lot, but I can't look to her for the help that I need that only God can provide. Did you hear me? I'm talking to you today, Yvette. Look to him because look, look to him. Look, look to him. Look to him because he already knows. Job said this. He knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I'm coming out as pure gold. He knows what I'm getting ready to do. But look to him. And I'm telling somebody today, put your trust in the Lord. Look to him. Look to him. 
If you hear me say, look to him, put your hand up, look to him today. Look to him today. How many in this room got something you need to look to the Lord for an answer for right now? If it's a cough that won't go away, look to him. He's the great physician. If it's an addiction that needs to go, look to him. <laughs> if fear has gripped your heart, it immobilized you, look to him. Because he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that you can ask or think. Look to him. Because when you get to the end of you, you're going to need something. And you know what? Here's the funny thing. I'm preaching. Sometimes I get to the end of me. And I confess, that's not good need to come to him in the first place but sometimes I just want to operate myself and he has to stop me and say preacher you still got to look to me look to me Blessings to you in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we bless you. For this time in the Word, God, we thank you that you neither slumber nor sleep. But you care for us, Paul. Bless you, Lord. And yes, God, we're going to give you all the glory and all the praise in the powerful name of Jesus. All over the room, lift up hands and praise. Just look to the Lord. Some of you need to release some needs right now. Just say, say God, God, I've been, I've been wrestling with it, but, but it's not my wrestling match. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you. Yay. throwing it over on you today. It ain't, it ain't the doctor. It ain't the, it ain't the job. It ain't the, the friend. It's, it's you, God. <laughs> it's you, God. Come on, lay it on him today. If you have to just mumble it, you don't want to say it out loud, lay it on him today. And I want to let you know he cares enough to know you. That's when somebody loves you and they want to help you. They know you. If that's you today, he knows you. If you're in this room and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord, you can do that today. Give him your life. Give him your heart. He loves you. He knows all about you. And he don't care where you come from. <laughs> I'm glad he cares. I'm glad he cares. He knows my pain. If that's you and you want to make that kind of decision for him, we don't want you to do anything else. You just want to surrender your life to him. You want to come back to the kingdom of God. If that's you, just slip up a hand and say, Pastor, that's me. You talk to me. I see your hand, baby. I see your hand. Thank you, Lord. Because he knows.
I know he knows. Some of you else, some of you in this room, you already know too. You want to be saved, baby, is that your life to the Lord. Amen. Come here. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. We're just going to pray for you as a church. Put your hands to me. Repeat this after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender my life to you. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I repent of sin today. I believe you died for me one day. So I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together for this young girl. question, but it's not for everything, but it's for something. If there's something you just need help in, stand to your feet. Not everything, but a specific thing that God has laid. side of me. I'm going to keep changing the glove. Thank you, baby. Just stand to that side of me. I'm going to keep changing. You don't have to come in a line, but it, it, it just come not going to be afraid to do what God wants us to do. You came together for a reason, to receive what you need. Jesus. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. 
We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.